Hey everyone, so today's video, we are going to be talking about how to tweak your resume for a business analyst job. So here I am showing you a sample resume and this is one that I created and added to my website. So you can go to carolise.com and download this sample resume and tweak it to match your specific situation and your personal information, right? So this is a resume sample I put out there and I remember the first time I posted it on my group which is called Real World business analysis and IT. The first time I posted, I got a couple of questions to say, hey, you know, this is more for a experienced business analyst and some people don't, you know, they don't have the experience, they're just leaving college, they've never worked in the field. Can you write one for someone who doesn't have the experience? And I thought to myself, yeah, that's a great idea. But then I thought to myself that you are also an analyst, right? You're supposed to look at something and see how you can analyze it and what you can glean from it and how you can make it work for you. So I haven't done one for like a fresher or a person leaving college, which I might still do, but I think this video would be helpful for anybody who's looking for a job in the business analyst space, whether you have a lot of experience or not, because what I'm talking about, I'm going to touch on ways that you can use what you do today or the, the little experience you have in something else and kind of tweak it to a business analyst um, job, right? So it should still be helpful to you. So this resume is two pages, well, one and a half pages. And some people think that they have to make their resume one page. You don't have to. What's important really is what you have first. The first set of things is important to keep people reading, but it doesn't mean that you have to um, cram everything into one page. I'd rather you spend time explaining your, your credentials and your work history, because that's what people are looking at. What experience do you have? And what can you tell them about what you've done or know how to do? I would, I'd rather you spend more time putting that on the first page and making that relevant than shortening it just to make it fit on one page. Um, granted, people may not read beyond the page. They just want to scan the thing really quickly. Some people might go to two pages. If you have three pages, that's the maximum. Like, do not go over three pages. You're not writing a, you know, like a, <laughs> like a book, right? So I would not encourage three pages that much. I'd rather stick to two. But I've seen resumes that go to three and it wasn't a big problem for me. What's important is that you spend the time making sure that you're putting things in the resume that will help you get the job, right? So I like to start off making sure you have a header. I think if you have multiple pages, making sure that your information is viewable, accessible on all the pages is very important. And the things that you put in your header is your name, of course, your, your address is important, but not as much important like your contact information. So your name, email, and telephone number is what I think would be the most important. If you want to put your address, that's fine. But again, make sure they can contact you and they know if they print it on the printer and one page didn't get printed, they pick up your resume, they know exactly who whose resume this is. That's the benefit of having it in the header because that prints on every page. And then, of course, you want to make your name obvious. So you make your name either a different color or a bigger text. I mean, there are so many different templates out there for resume styles, contemporary, functional, all of these things. If you go to Word, you can just pick one of them and put your resume in that style. It really doesn't matter that much. I mean, some people get very fancy. They put their picture. You know, they have a very weird layout that's really eye-catching and popping. I mean, you can do all of that stuff, it's great. Um, but I really find that information is the most important thing. So if you wanna have great information plus a great design, I mean, that's great. I, I don't have no problem with that. 
but from a simplistic point of view at least make sure your name is bold and obvious and big and stands out and if you can change the color as you see here i put mine in orange to make that pop a little bit then you do that and then of course you must put your contact information and if you have your personal website go ahead and put that too because people do go check out your website to see what kinds of things are you posting and what you know what's there now most people don't do this but i like to put an objective or maybe a summary and all this is saying is why am i applying to this job now some people accompany their resumes with their cover letter and that really covers you know why you want the job but i also find that a lot of people do not read the cover letter they ask for it but they don't read it like when i get applicants i don't have time to read the cover letter you want the job i know it that's why you're applying <laughs> show me what you know and show me what you've done and that's where i'm good that's the first thing i'm getting to reading the cover letter is just to see if you can actually put words together and i'm going to find that out in other ways so i i really don't know if the cover letter is as valuable anymore it used to be very important back in the day but i think we're all you know we've all gotten so busy even the people who are recruiting you, they don't have to read the cover letter. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't do one. If they ask for one, go ahead and do it. But in lieu of the cover letter, I think it's always good to have a paragraph that explains why you're looking for the job because that will help them. It's like the first impression, right? It's the first thing that they will read about you. So you, if you can put a nice sentence together, that gives them the impression that you actually care about the job and if you make it specific to the job you're applying for for example in this case it says obtain the job of business analyst and this is because this is a template but if i was applying to coca-cola i would say obtain the job of business analyst at coca-cola where i can do such and such and such right so it's a nice place to put just the one paragraph you know three or four lines the most of why you want the job and that cements in their mind that you're you know you mean business it, it shouldn't take up too much space on your resume because it should be very scannable and very quick um but it's more for the human reader and i'm going to talk about the different ways people get to your resume in a few minutes but for the person who's actually looking at it then they can read and understand why you want the job so let me just jump into that that's a good segue um, not all of the time will your resume be read by a person. So sometimes when you upload your resumes, these URLs, they have these scanning capability that they're looking for certain keywords. They're looking for things that would make your resume appropriate to the job description and they're trying to do the match so that the recruiter or the hiring manager doesn't have to do that work. So what they would do is they scan your resume and then they recommend applicants to the hiring manager to say okay of all the applications we got here are the ones that we think make the best the best match because people could be i mean when you have a job you could get thousands of applications you could get hundreds so nobody has time to really go through each one of them to find the best candidate and then you you'd be like a needle in a haystack unless you know someone to put you through and even sometimes when you know someone it has to go through the process so you know, it's it's just a way for them to know who to look at and not look at everyone. So the reason why I like to put my objectives as well is just it gives me more keywords that I can rank for. I can be found. And so that would help me to flow to the top of the recommended list. Now, once you've done with your objective, then you want to get into your history. So if you are, I'm going to start off with the um, the experienced business analyst, and I'm going to talk about the person who's been working in something similar to business analysis but doesn't have the title or just working around projects in general but has never really, you know, done business analysis but they have a job somewhere else doing something else. And then I'm going to talk about um, the student. So it's the experienced one who's just switching jobs between business analysis. It's just somebody who has had a job before. Um, in probably corporate or somewhere else and then this is a person the person who has never had a job like a fresh graduate who has no idea what the working world is like so I'm going to talk about these three but I'm using the same template to explain how you would you would navigate this so 
your employment history is the most important thing that you can present when you are showing your resume, right? You are not there to explain yourself, so your resume has to do the talking for you. So the first thing is you definitely need a section called employment history because people are looking for that. Or you could just say employment, you know, and that's what it is. Don't say jobs and don't say other things that don't relate. Because job could be anything, say employment or work history, I think that would be appropriate. Now you start off with the job you've had last, obviously, and you put your title, the job title you held, and the company. Some people go on to put the address of the company and all this stuff. I mean, that's fine. Some people put the um, the company first and the, the years that they've worked there and then the title. Some people put the title first. I think those are trivial, like you could put it in any order there. But it's important to have the three pieces there. So the name of the company, the um, the role that you held, and from when to when. You don't know if the person who is going to read your resume may also have worked there and they have a connection with you just from being at the same company or something. So it's good to put the company as well. Now, once you put the company and the role, those things should be in bold to let them know you know, this is something they should focus on. Some people even just bold the role because the role is very important in this discussion. So they just bold the role and they put everything else in regular. That's fine too. But what's important is what you say, right? It's very important what you say. So the first thing I want to start off is you need to look at the job description and see what they're asking for because that's a very good clue as to what you need to say first. So if they're asking for, you know, experience, um, with writing specifications and you put that as a first thing if you have that experience, right? So I'm talking about the experience BA right now. I'm going to get to um, the person working in a different job and the fresher in a, in a minute. So for the experience BA, if you've been working as a business analyst already, then you look at the job description and you look at what they're asking for and you put those things first for each of the companies that you've worked. So in this case, I'm saying work closely with stakeholders to develop specifications for data integration across multiple enterprise level systems. This is just to say that you're, you know, you've worked with stakeholders. Then we have been able to do Lean Six Sigma. We have cross-functional teams, you know, backlog management and things like that. So you you may have done much more than this, but you just want to narrow it down to a few points. It's okay if you have more than just the four that I have. You could have six, you could have eight. Um, just make sure you're not being repetitive or you're not being too petty, like too simple. Like you're not saying, oh, I wrote a report on data association and I wrote another report on um, customer retention. Like you wrote reports, you know what I mean? Like just make sure you can say you've been doing report writing. You don't need to go into each individual type of report and stuff like that. So generally keep it at a high enough level that people who don't know your actual job can follow what you did and make it relevant to the job you're applying for, right? Then, so you go through that for all of the places where you've worked. Now the good thing is, so as an experienced business analyst, you may have been doing the same things in different places. So you don't wanna repeat the same things, you know, in this case, three times. So you make sure you, you cover the most important things for the first job where it applies. And then for the other jobs, you can spread it out and say the other things that you did that you didn't already cover, if that makes sense. So that you can show a plethora, you can show a breadth of, of, of skills and experience that they could benefit from. They don't want to read the same thing over and over again, right? So in this case, I start off by saying I work with stakeholders. And then in the next example about working at First Trade, I said, work with clients and agents in the commercial insurance field. Or sometimes you can separate or differentiate just by the industry that you did the same thing in to make it seem different, right? So you're not sounding too repetitive. Um, so in this case, I work closely with stakeholders to develop the specifications. Obviously to work closely with someone, you have to interview them, you have to talk to them. But I just reworded it in the second one to say conducted stakeholder interviews. So you just have to kind of be creative in how you express what you've done if you've done the same things in different places to make sure it doesn't sound very repetitive and very boring and that the person reading it doesn't get, you know, doesn't get disinterested very quickly. So that's what you will do if you're an experienced business analyst to make sure that you, you cover all of what you've done and that you make it rep applicable to the job. Now, if you have been working in another field, 
let's say you have worked in something completely different from business analysis, or you've worked in a project close to business analysis in terms of you've been doing some work with the project, but you've, you haven't held the title, you may have things that you were doing that is not called business analysis, but it does definitely help. So for example, if you were in tech support, right? Let's say it came in as a tech support, then you want to show how your experience in tech support can be applicable to what they're looking for in a business analyst job. So for example, if they say that they want someone who can um, write business requirements document. Now you've worked as a tech support, you have not written any business requirements document, but the business requirements document is the documentation of the user's needs, right? So if you understand that concept, and I, by the way, I have a, a video that I uploaded which talks about how to write your business requirements document, and I have a template as well on the website that you can go download. So I'm gonna put the link to the video here that you can go check out you know, when you have some time. So going back to this discussion, so if you work as a technical support, for example, and the, the, the requirement of the job is saying, hey, you need to write requirements documents and you've never written a requirement document in your life, but what have you done? You've talked to customers, you know, you've understood their needs, you've found ways to solve the problems, you've communicated back with them, you've gotten buy-in from them that the solution that you provided was working. So you've done something close to what you do for a business requirements document, you just haven't documented it in the same way. So you can say, you know, determine customers' needs and empathize, empathize with their situation, right? You, you demonstrated the ability to listen to the customer, to understand their requirements, to, um, to document some of it in your ticket or your support ticket. So you can use back some of the words, but still stay true to what you actually did if that makes sense to you. Let's say you worked in sales and you've been doing uh, first line sales for many years and you've never actually <laughs> done any kind of elicitation at all. So elicitation, we, I have another video on how to do elicitation, which I'm gonna put the link here that you can also go check out what are the techniques that you should use for eliciting requirements. So let's say the business analyst job is requiring you to do elicitation. And you're, you've never done that, but you worked in sales. With sales, in order for you to make the sale, you literally have to understand what the problem is so that your product or your service can actually match the problem. So you may have been having conversations with people to understand them so that you can know which product to suggest to them, to know if you can actually make the sale. So from a sales perspective, you can say you, you spoke with um, uh, prospects to understand their needs, and then to be able to make the right analysis to suggest the appropriate product, right? So it's just the way that you word it. You have to word it in a way that makes sense for business analysis so that when the manager reads or the hiring manager reads their resume, yeah, they don't see business analysis as a title, but when they look at what you're doing and the way you've worded it, you can actually, they can actually make the connection of, hey, she doesn't have that experience, but the way she's been working in something else, I think she could be a, still be a good fit. Let's at least get her in and talk to her and see what else we can find out. You just need to get your foot to the door and you need to make your resume help you get there, right? So that's something you can do. You've not worked as a business analyst, but you have worked somewhere else. You have done something else. You have you have something that you can offer as a value. And hopefully you would have done some courses, you'd have gotten your BABOC, so you have kind of some background knowledge of what business analysis is. So you're not just applying because you see a job you know, application somewhere and like, oh, let me just send a resume over here. You're actually actively trying to get into the field. And I'm sure you would have done the courses, that you'd have done the reading, you've done some research, and you're trying to understand what it means to do this job. So you just don't have the, the resume um, to match the job specifically, but if you word what you have done in such a way, you could get a chance. You could get a chance into an interview and then you could make your point there. So this is just to help you understand how to frame your resume in a business analyst way. Now, if you are a new, um, 
a new graduate, right? And you're looking for, first of all, if you're a new graduate, you should be looking for an entry-level job because you're not gonna get a strategic business analyst job if you have zero experience, unless your parents own the company or something like that, right? So it's not gonna be so easy for the rest of us. Um, so you're looking for an entry-level job, you're looking for a job that's gonna help you to get your foot to the door. Um, and so people understand that you're just graduating college, right? So you don't have to pretend to be more than you are. We, we, we understand that you're just leaving college and you could even be starting with an internship and then you're trying to get into, into the actual field. So be honest about that. So, I mean, for everybody, for all the people I've talked about, you have to be truthful on your resume. Do not fluff things up. Um, do not add things that you haven't done because they'll ask you and then you, you'll probably not be able to answer properly. Use what you have done, use what you, you, you know, and just reword it to be more business analyst friendly. That's all I'm saying. Just tweak it. Just make sure it's been expressed the right way. That's all I'm, that's what I mean. I don't mean that you're going to go and tell lies. Don't do that. That's not good. It's just bad karma all around. Don't do it. So for the fresher, for the new graduate, you don't have any job experience. You've never worked before. What you have done, though, at school is you've probably done a lot of papers. You've written a lot of papers. You have done a lot of projects. You've had to work in a team. You've had to present. You've had to uh, research and come up with your own analysis. These are very valuable things, right? Especially if you're at the master's degree level where you have to write your own thesis and stuff like that. This is valuable information. This is how you have been able to um, take an unknown and bring it to fruition to come up with an analysis or be able to document it and ex you know, expose that, maybe publish it in some paper or something. And if you're just doing your bachelor's degree, you would have done some of the same things as well. So leverage that. So in this case, you wouldn't have employment history, you'd have, you know, education. And then you'd say, you could say like relevant projects. I think there's another way for a name for this. I'm forgetting it right now. It could be like relevant projects or relevant um, case studies. Um, something that you've done, some project that you've worked on that would be relevant. So you, you have um, relevant projects, or relevant case studies and you they know that you're a student because you'd have said that in your education section and then you name the project and you go into the same kind of format that you worked with um, the managers to understand the, the, the business case you're able to document the business case you made a presentation on this you you came up with suggestions your your project was implemented like all the things that you did on projects that are relating to business analysis, then you should put it there. Even the project is not related to business analysis. You had to do some analysis. You had to work in a group. So you talk about being able to, um, to lead a group, being able to talk with different people and get their perspectives, being able to um, um, probably run a workshop, you know, to understand the, the, the problem that you're trying to solve, brainstorming ideas, things like that and how you led that, like not just to be a part of it, a participant, but how you actually helped, what, you know, what did you do? And you put it in short bullet points like this. You don't need a whole paragraph, nobody's gonna read a big paragraph. It needs to be to the point, very succinct, very direct. And you talk about that, you talk about the presentations that you did in your, in, your, in your class. If you had to present your thesis to the panel, then you can explain that, you know, presented the thesis on the panel, got good sign-off. That's an example of sign-off and buy-in, right? To be able to present something and have others in a panel format, you know, assess what you did and give you, give you, a, you know, a go-ahead. So that's kind of like buy-in. So you can say got buy-in from the, the panelists on the suggestions proposed, things like that. So whatever you did for your projects, for your case studies, for your internships, you can put them here but don't call it employment history because you weren't employed. Just call it, you know, relevant case studies or uh, relevant projects or something to show that you've been working some kind of way um, that could be, you know, applicable to the job that you're applying for. That's kind of what you do. And if you've worked, you know, if you've been to school for like five years or so, you don't have to put every single one. You could put the last few ones that you've done that's closest in the date. So if the last project you did was 
in October 2019, then that's the one you put first, right? And certainly show how relevant it is based on what the job description is asking for. So that's what you do, depending on your stage as a business analyst. And then, of course, you put your education history. You can put references. I didn't put any because this is a template. But if you had references, you put them here. Or you could say references available on request. Depends on what you want. But the important thing that people always miss out on their resume is this keyword section. People always miss this out. This should be the last thing on your resume because normally by the time they get to the end of your resume, they may not be reading all of it, <laughs> to be honest. They may have made up their mind from just the employment history. But you put all of your education, you put your references, but you need to put the keywords because the keywords, it says two things. One, for the human person reading your resume, they know that keywords is just just keywords. Right? They know what it's there for. So you don't want to put it at the beginning because it doesn't really make sense for a human person to be reading. But for the machines that are going to assess your resume, they need to know that this resume matches the job description so you look at the job description you look at for you look for everything they're asking for they're asking for a requirements document they're asking for sql um knowledge they're asking to write user stories they're asking for ux design and to be able to use jira and having lean six sigma and all of the things that they put in their job description you get those words and you dump them into your keyword section your keyword section could be big it might just be like a paragraph I don't suggest it's an entire page because that's like spammy. Like that's spammy at that point. So you want maybe, I don't know, the most 20, 20 keywords, depending on how long they are. Um, and you try to not make it like a whole half a page. That would be crazy. You want it to be, I don't know, maybe from here to here of words. I don't know how much words that would be. But you definitely want to have keywords in there to make sure that you can be found and that you match and you can float up to the top. That's the purpose of the keyword because these robots that are reading the resumes, they will not suggest you if you don't match. And then when the human actually gets your resume, if it's at the bottom, it doesn't hurt. Like nobody's gonna scream that, oh my God, they put keywords, it's so weird. You know, they're not gonna give you the job. No, that never happens. The keyword will get you floating to the top and it will help you to get your resume seen. And then hopefully you can get in, do a good interview, and get the job. So I am rooting for you guys. I am rooting for you to go out there and to do your resumes. You can go to the website, carolise.com, go to templates, and go download this, tweak it, make it match your personal information and your specific situation, and go out there with confidence, right? I have another video on the interview questions. It's a video from 2019 but it's still relevant um i'm gonna put the link right here so go watch that and understand how what questions to expect and how to answer those questions tweak your resume send it out there and be confident i mean this is 2020 we already start the year off with a lot of trouble <laughs> right it's, the year did not start well let me just say that but we can we can we can accomplish things there are people who are still being hired even with this thing going on um work is still being done you can you can get it you can get this job you can go out there you can do this so get the resume download it of course like the video subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet show me some support y'all and i will see y'all in the next video thank you very much talk to y'all later bye